Backup and recovery. In this nugget, we're going to talk about the different ways you have on a Mac to backup the Mac and recover files. Uh, we'll talk about backup software, and we'll also talk about the Time Machine feature available in newer versions of OS X. We'll also talk about a cool feature called Target Mode um, that allows your Mac to actually become an external hard drive to another Mac so that you can move files back and forth uh, to repair, to copy user profiles, to restore files, and uh, stuff like that. Here's one of my favorite techniques to use with the Mac. When you turn your Mac on, when you push the power button, hold down the T key on your keyboard. And now this does need to be a wired keyboard in most cases. A wireless keyboard doesn't actually start communicating with the Mac until uh, later in the boot process. So you hold down the T key, and the way you can remember T is this is called target disk mode. Now this is only valid on Mac computers that have a built-in FireWire port. Uh, and it can be a FireWire 400 or 800 port. Either one will do. Uh, and so target disk mode, you're going to keep holding the T down. You're going to hear the bong noise uh, that the Mac makes when its firmware gets started. You'll see the Apple logo and keep holding it down until that FireWire logo starts floating around the screen, sort of that triangular, vaguely, FireWire logo. What this is, is a feature that's built into the Mac firmware that turns the entire Mac into a FireWire hard drive, an external FireWire hard drive. So what you can do with this, once it's in that target disk mode, let's say you've got uh, an iMac here. This will be my iMac. And I have put it into FireWire target mode. And then over here, I've got my, uh, my laptop, maybe. And it's running normal OS X. I take a FireWire cable and plug the two together. And this Mac will show up as a drive on the desktop of this Mac. And then I can open it and explore the files and do everything else. And so sort of the practical upshot of this is that you have full access to every file on the Mac and none of them are open and running because the operating system isn't actually open and running. This isn't like a special mode of the operating system. It's a special mode of the firmware, the actual chips inside the computer. And so the entire Mac is capable of looking like an external FireWire hard drive and then all the files are just, they're just sitting there. You can very easily back them up across the wire to another computer or restore individual files. And this is something that I've found to be really useful. I had a couple of uh, situations where I, I may have corrupted or messed up one of the actual operating system files. I'm not even sure how I did it. But by putting the Mac uh, that was damaged into target disk mode and using my laptop to connect to it, I could copy those files um, and in fact, all I did is I co because the two laptops were running the same version of OS X, I actually copied the operating system file from here over to here, replacing the one that was messed up. And then I could restart this computer, my iMac, normally, and everything was fine. So this target disk mode can be really, really useful for uh, um, getting out of kind of sticky recovery situations. I'll tell you the other time that it really comes in handy. And this is actually one of the big reasons Apple builds it in. Is uh, In fact, let me get rid of my, my laptop here. Let's say you've got a user who's got an iMac. Maybe it's an older, uh, like a G5 iMac. Uh, it's not an Intel. And so you've gone out and you've bought them a brand spanking new aluminum colored Intel iMac. So this is the Intel version. You put the G5, you put the G5 in, you put the G5 out, so you, you put the G5 into target disk mode, hook the two together with a FireWire cable, and then run the OS X installer on this computer. What it will do is allow you to migrate all of the user's files and settings and everything else, which are all very easy to get to because they're in target disk mode. So it'll bring all that over, and then when you actually hand this to the user, all their files are there, all their settings are there, all their preferences are there, everything is there. 
Uh, so that's a, a really common use for this target disk mode feature. Um, I think it's just a, a, a really, really neat thing that the, this whole ability of the firmware to make the computer act like a external FireWire drive. Now for the caveats. Target disk mode is FireWire only. Now that may change in the future because what we're starting to see is Mac computers that do not have a FireWire port. Meaning if you boot them into target mode, there's no way to actually utilize that. It won't work over USB. Not today at least. Um, it, it's possible in the future that Apple will make a revision to the firmware so that there is a USB target mode and that this will work over USB. Uh, and that will sort of accommodate the fact that all modern Mac computers have USB ports, but FireWire ports are getting a little bit more rare. Now in terms of making backups, you've pretty much got two broad directions that you can go. Direction number one is to simply get some backup software. Uh, if you are a MobileMe member, if you're a MobileMe subscriber, and you go to your iDisk, then under the software folder, you will find backup for Mac OS X, 10.4.2 or later, 10.5. So this is a, a free thing that MobileMe subscribers can get. If you're not a MobileMe subscriber, there are tons of third parties that make backup software for the Mac. It's important to note that it doesn't come with any that are, that's really built in that you're going to use. Um, this particular one is neat in that it can, uh, once you install it, you can schedule backups. It'll grab your, your personal settings. You can tell it to exclude your music if you have a huge iTunes library. Um, you can have it back up to an external hard drive. You can have it back up to your iDisk, your MobileMe iDisk. Uh, and that's what this backup folder is, is actually for. You can see all these different backups that I've made. And so it stores them for a long period of time and, you know, rotates out the old ones and so forth so that you've always got several different backups floating around in there. Um, and you can control all that so you can, you know, worry about how much space you've got free in your iDisk and everything else. Um, if you go with a third-party application, uh, those usually kind of offer similar options. You can back up to uh, an online store. In fact, there are online-only services. Many of the same ones you might use for a PC offer a Mac client as well. And so that's kind of, you know, one broad direction. It, for Macs who are, that are in the office, um, if you have an enterprise backup solution, uh, backup exec or whatever else, many of those solutions also offer a Mac client so that your users' local um, documents and files and folders and so forth can all be backed up to a central tape library or, or something like that. So that's one broad direction, backup software. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, it's, it's certainly convenient. It's relatively easy to set up. I think the downside about using backup software like that is that a lot of end users are going to need help when it comes time to restore something. Um, a lot of those uh, backup solutions make it very easy to make backups, but they don't always make it easy enough for end users to do their own restoration. Now if you go out and you buy a, uh, one of these external hard drives that are designed for one-touch backup, um, so the drive itself will usually have a button on it and that will force a full backup of the machine it's attached to. Um, or you can have software install the machine that will periodically back up whatever files and folders you've selected. Those usually come with software tools that make restoring relatively straightforward, enough so that a user could do it on their own. Um, I find that of all the products like that out there, about 10 to 20 percent of them do support uh, Mac computers. And honestly, the best place uh, is to go to apple.com go to their store and look for solutions there because if Apple's selling it then it will work. That doesn't mean you have to buy it from Apple um, but it does allow you to identify the solutions that will work with a Mac. So let's talk about the other broad direction. It's called Time Machine and it's one of the features of uh, newer versions of Mac OS X. OS X Leopard in fact. If um, I do about this Mac you can see that this is 10.5.7. That's the Leopard edition of Mac OS X. Uh, and one of the new features introduced in Leopard is this Time Machine feature. So here's how Time Machine works. You've got two options for where you store your backups. I have plugged in an external USB drive. Now if your Mac has FireWire, you can also use an external FireWire drive. Um, and I've gone into the Time Machine preferences. 
I've turned Time Machine on, and I've selected that external disk. And you can see that what it's done is it's changed that from a USB disk icon into this. This is the Time Machine icon, or the Time Machine logo. So it's letting me know that this disk is being used for Time Machine backups. Your other option is to buy an Apple Time Capsule. Now this is a combination uh, router and hard drive. So it's, it's kind of like a, a, a network access point. It's a wireless network access point. Uh, it's designed to route traffic between a private network like a home or a small office and the internet. Uh, so it, it does that routing function. And it has a hard drive built right inside of it. Uh, and that hard drive can be used to store time machine backups for multiple computers. So if you've got multiple Macs, instead of having to um, plug an external hard drive in every single one of them to do time machine backups, you can have the time machine stuff go to this central network location. There are also some third-party network attached storage options that will work with Time, time Machine. Um, they're not Time Capsule branded, um, but the only thing is your results may vary. I've had some really good luck with some, not such good luck with others. So. Uh, going back to the Time Machine Preferences, actually let me get there the long way so you know where it is. It's under System Preferences, Time Machine. And remember this icon because we're going to go looking for that elsewhere in just a minute. So you can change the disk. Um, you can see that it's allowing me to select my time capsule or that external drive. Um, you can see that I do have a failed backup. I did that on purpose. I, I made it sort of crash out on me so that I could uh, get in here and play with this. Um, options let you exclude. So I've decided that I don't want to back up my system files and applications, nor do I want to back up my Mac OS X applications. Uh, if something goes wrong with one of those, I'm willing to reinstall from the, uh, the operating system DVD. I've also excluded my virtual machines folder where I keep all of my VMware Fusion virtual machine files simply because they're very, very large and I don't want them taking up space on the time, cap on the time machine um, storage drive. So here's what this does. Approximately every hour, hourly backups, it will go in and back up all the files that have been created or changed since the last hourly backup. And it keeps those hourly backups for 24 hours. A daily backup, which sums up all the hourly backups for that day, is retained for an entire month. So you've got 30 days of daily backups. Now that's not hour by hour, it's just all the files that changed over the course of that entire day. And then weekly backups, all the files that changed over the course of an entire week are retained so long as there's room on your disk to do so. So it's automatically, transparently, and these, these numbers are not configurable, it's always going to do these hourly, daily, weekly cycle. It's automated, it's intended to be easy for users to operate. So there's two ways to, so once that backup is happening, and, and the first one, understand, is going to take a while because that's where it gets its baseline. That's where it has to go get basically every single file that you haven't specifically excluded and back them all up. So once it's done that, the hourly incremental backups that start occurring every hour are uh, really, really easy, really, really quick. Because, I mean, how many files do you honestly change in an hour? Um, one of the reasons I exclude my virtual machine files is because they're large, simply launching the virtual machine makes a change to the file and so Time Machine keeps wanting to grab it over and over and over and over. So once you've gotten some backups, there are two ways to actually use Time Machine. Um, one is to go into the Applications folder, find the Time Machine logo, and double click it. In the Preferences though, I have told it to leave a Time Machine status in the menu bar and so I can go to the menu bar and enter Time Machine. Now Time Machine works across a few of the built-in OS X applications. It works with the built-in mail application. Um, I've used it with the built-in calendar application and where it really excels is at the built-in finder, uh, which is where you're going to mess with your files and your folders. So this is my uh, um, documents folder for example. So let's say I've, I've wandered along I've uh, pulled this up and I'm looking for a file and I'm, I, I don't see it. Oh, and it's not in that folder. That folder's empty. That folder shouldn't be empty. Oh no, I've deleted the file. It's okay. All I need to do is enter Time Machine. This is really cool. 
It's going to shrink that window down to a more manageable size. My desktop slides away, and now I'm in the time machine. Uh, I think this is pretty cool. You can uh, scroll through this window if you need to, but notice how this window is stacked up back into the past. And I've got this little chronology, this little timeline over here. So this is today, and this is now, and this chronology represents all the time machine backups that I've ever made that are still stored on disk. All those hourly backups, daily backups for a month, and the weekly backups for as much space as I have on my drive. Now when the drive starts to run out of space, it'll start deleting weekly backups to make room for more. So that's it, it's automatically self-maintaining that way. I can go back in time and take a look at this finder window as it existed at previous points in time. So if I go back in time far enough, I'll be able to find that missing file, click it, so uh, let me flip down to my documents folder here. You'll notice it's graying out the things that are on the network because I can't back those up. So I could click the file I wanted to restore, click restore, and it will bring that file forward in time out of the past. And then time machine will slide away, my desktop will come back, and I would have access to that file again. And so it's a really simple way for users to sort of operate a backup restore system. Um, it's intuitive, you know, it's easy to think of, I'm not going and looking for a particular file, I want to see this folder as it existed two weeks ago because that's when that file was there. And then I can click on the file and bring just that one forward in time. Uh, so it's kind of a, a neat interface for operating a backup and restore system. Um, it, it basically works pretty well. I will tell you there are a couple of caveats. Um, I made it fail on purpose so I could get this icon up, but this is a caution icon, and it means that the last backup failed. When I see that, and, and I do sometimes, I'll usually just tell it backup now, and it'll try again. It'll also automatically try again in the next hour uh, on its regular cycle. So when you get the little exclamation point like this, it's it's got a message for you. So it's saying latest backup was delayed. If I go into Time Machine Preferences, I may get some more information. Uh, nope, it's not going to tell me why, it's just going to do it on its next cycle. Um, I have found, I'll come in and I'll sit down at my Mac in the morning, and one of the evening backups uh, will fail, and I'll have a, a dialog box on the screen actually telling me that Time Machine failed, but when I look up at the icon, it's the normal, it's, it's this icon, it's the normal operating icon. Uh, and that tells me that during the evening, one of the hourly backups failed, but that a later one worked and everything's fine now. So you can just hit OK on the dialog box and let it go. The only time you need to be really worried about this is if it's doing it while you're grabbing your first, your initial backup. That backup you need to succeed. And I'll tell you where the problem comes in. If you're getting this repeatedly, like I'm doing right now, I think it's going to come up again in just a second with that. There it goes. The reason that's happening is because I've got a very, very tiny, uh, small laptop portable hard drive plugged into the USB port. And there's two things wrong with it. Number one, the drive itself, the, the physical hard drive that's in the external enclosure is not very fast. And it's not taking the data from USB fast enough. And so Time Machine gets backed up and it can't complete. Um, you'll also get really cheap external enclosures, even if it's got a great drive in it. Um, if it's a really cheaply made external enclosure, the USB circuitry can't keep up with the full USB speed, which is 480 megabytes per second, or megabits per second. Um, and so if that's happening to you a lot over and over and over, you need to go spend more than $30 on your external drive, or pick up a time capsule. So I'm going to change disk over to Time Capsule, tell it to use for backup. It's going to prompt me for the Time Capsule password that I created when I set up the Time Capsule for the first time. And it's going to have to think about this for a second. It has to go out and talk to it and communicate with it, and eventually you'll see it starting to make the backup. Um, a lot of times what will confuse people is when you're using the Time Capsule like that. Uh, here, you see it. it's finally switched over to using the Time Capsule now and uh, probably not enough network bandwidth right now in my network to make that happen. But what you'll see happen is a, uh, a little white disk icon will appear over here. 
and it's a local disk image and all the backups get made to that local disk image first and then copied over to the time capsule over the network. Um, after your initial backup, that usually goes so quickly that you don't even see the thing flash by, but if it is happening, that's something you can sort of let users know is, is perfectly normal. Uh, and so that's the, the time machine functionality. I think it's a, a great backup and restore tool. It's certainly something that you can use as a primary way of letting your users um, service themselves in terms of getting their documents and so forth backed up and then allowing them to self-service go in and, and pull out whatever documents and folders that they need. In this nugget, we've talked about the ways to backup and restore files and folders on your Mac. We talked about target mode which allows your Mac to become a Firewire hard drive attached to another Mac, so you can move files back and forth. We talked about sort of traditional backup software, including the free backup client that's available to MobileMe subscribers and any third-party backup software or tools that you might want to use. And we talked about Time Machine, a feature that started in OS 10.5 and later versions uh, that provides a local user self-service graphical user interface around what is actually a pretty standard backup routine. It's the graphical user interface that, that really sells it because it makes it easier for users to understand how the backup works and it's completely automated. Remember that it will work with an external USB drive as well as network attached storage such as Apple's Time Capsule. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.